This video is sponsored by First Phosphate Corporation, a publicly traded North American renewable energy infrastructure company for the LFP battery supply chain. I have placed their ticker symbols below. The North American lithium ion battery market, which has long been dominated by nickel based batteries, is shifting and domestic LFP battery production is about to skyrocket. Follow along as I discuss some of the biggest LFP related developments in North America, including two big moves by Tesla. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries. And there are several reasons for that. First of all, the battery technology costs less because it doesn't use expensive materials like nickel and cobalt, but it uses much lower cost and more abundant cathode materials. Second of all, LFP batteries generally last much longer and are more robust, allowing you to charge more regularly to 100% without a lot of degradation. And they're really safe. Then when it comes to nickel and cobalt, not only are those metals expensive, but they're not as abundant and cobalt actually is a conflict heavy metal with some issues around sourcing it. So LFP batteries are an important part of the clean energy revolution, but because of high tariffs imposed on batteries and battery materials imported from China, demand for North American LFP supply is rapidly increasing. LFP batteries are also used in an increasing number of products spanning from the rapidly growing energy storage market, which has seen huge growth in demand for these products to support, for example, AI data centers. Then of course there's robotics and a growing number of electric vehicles that are using LFP batteries or will in the near future. This has all led to big LFP investments from major automakers, existing battery manufacturers, and important new supply chain partners like First Phosphate Corporation, a publicly traded North American supplier of the critical phosphate needed to manufacture LFP batteries, which I'll talk more about later on. When it comes to Tesla, they have made two pretty big moves somewhat recently in the LFP domestic market. For example, they are about finished with their Sparks Nevada LFP battery factory, which is expected to produce around 10 gigawatt hours of batteries per year once fully ramped up. And that factory, according to Tesla, was almost ready in June. In addition, reportedly, Tesla inked a $4.3 billion deal with LG Energy Solutions for domestically produced LFP batteries. But with that being said, LG Energy Solutions does have a battery factory in Holland, Michigan, where they are building LFP batteries. And that factory, when operating at full capacity, should be able to produce around 16.5 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. And based on what I could tell, that factory is already operational. Beyond that, LG Energy Solutions and Samsung SDI, in partnership with GM, do plan to convert some of the manufacturing space in their Ultium plants in Tennessee and Ohio over to LFP battery technology for vehicle use and LFP production is set to begin sometime in 2027 for those factories. Ford is also making moves in this space and their American LFP battery plant is set to begin battery production next year. Also, First Phosphate Corporation recently made commercial grade LFP batteries using their North American supply to prove the quality viability and possibility of building LFP batteries from a local supply chain. I also came across a smaller newer company that is named American Battery Factory Incorporated and they're building out an LFP battery factory in the Tucson, Arizona area with the planned first phase of this factory being complete by the second half of next year. Interestingly enough, I found that they do have a supply deal with the sponsor of this video, First Phosphate Corp to supply North American raw materials for their LFP battery production. And with that in mind, that leads me to the supply chain side of LFP battery production. Of course, it's not enough just to build the batteries in the USA. You need to actually localize the supply chain, the materials that are needed to make these batteries, at least the bulk of those materials. Now, when it comes to LFP batteries, the main components in an LFP battery are of course the iron, and depending on the process you use, you either need iron sulfate, which is not quite as readily available in the United States, 
Or for example, first phosphate's process of making LFP batteries does not use iron sulfate, but rather uses an iron powder. And there is a pretty robust supply chain for iron in general in the United States. Then of course you need lithium for the cathode of the battery. Now beyond iron and lithium, in order to manufacture LFP batteries, you need a lot of phosphate. LFP, lithium iron phosphate. And until recently, I didn't realize how much phosphate was necessary for manufacturing LFP batteries. So when you think about these batteries, phosphate is a really important part of the supply chain for manufacturing these batteries. And we have to have a good North American source for battery grade phosphate materials. Thankfully, first phosphate is becoming a really important part of the North American supply chain for phosphate. They have a strategic phosphorus mine in the Quebec, Canada area. And this mine has really high purity igneous phosphate rock material available, which is really well suited to convert over to battery grade phosphate material. Their igneous phosphate concentrate is devoid of a lot of deleterious elements commonly found in this rock, which is also kind of rare. As you can see on this slide, there are not very many suppliers of purified phosphoric acid in the Western world, so they have a big opportunity there, and there's going to need to be quite an increase in the supply chain here for this purified phosphoric acid and the phosphate igneous rock that is used to make that for domestic LFP battery production to actually happen. And as you can see on this slide, high quality, high purity igneous phosphate rock like first phosphate has available in their mine is rare. And when it comes to the purified phosphoric acid needed to make these batteries, there are only a few suppliers in the Western world and most of that supply is already spoken for for other industries that use that product, not in the battery production market. So for truly domestic LFP battery production to happen, there needs to be a good strong phosphate supply chain as well. And first phosphate has the benefit of the high quality igneous phosphate rock in their mine in the Quebec, Canada area. Beyond the high quality source from that mine, it's also a very strategically located mine, not only in North America, but it's located near important existing infrastructure like a deep sea port, an airport, and rail network. At the end of the video, I'm going to cover some of the big factors that will drive and are driving a huge demand increase for North American made LFP batteries, including some new LFP powered EVs. But beyond future demand, around 25 to 30% of the offtakes from the mine and the phosphoric acid plants are already called for, which helps de-risk you know, the profitability of this company. But beyond that, of course, there's going to be huge demand way beyond that, as I will discuss later on. Now, when it comes to the rare igneous phosphate deposit for first phosphate's mine, the area is 2.5 kilometers in length, and it looks like the mineral is available at the surface and descends to 250 meters. And based on this, it looks like they should be able to get 900,000 tons of phosphate concentrate per annum, which equates to enough to produce approximately 350 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries. So this is a pretty significant supply that should be available from First Phosphate. Beyond the mine itself, First Phosphate has plans for a lot of vertical integration. For example, on this slide, you can see that they plan to own the extraction and concentration of the product from the mine. Then they plan to work with partners to produce LFP grade purified phosphoric acid and with partners to produce LFP cathode active material as well. Also another really important move by First Phosphate is they actually built on a pilot line a test of some LFP batteries using their materials to prove out the quality and the viability of building these batteries with their North American supply. I asked First Phosphate for more clarity around this topic whether or not they intended to build commercially and sell lithium iron phosphate batteries, the finished product themselves. And it doesn't appear like they intend to become a battery cell manufacturer right now beyond just the pilot test production to prove out the quality of materials, but it didn't seem to be completely ruled out for the future. Now, with all that being said, first phosphate is not just getting started. They've been working on this for a while. And as you can see on this slide, they've actually met a lot of their milestones already. And you can see from 2022 to 2025, they've accomplished a lot. 
In addition, when you compare First Phosphate to other public companies with information that's available, they not only are a North American source, which not all of these are, they are LFP battery focused, which looks like most of these other ones are not, and they have super high purity igneous phosphate rock. So First Phosphate does have a number of big advantages in the market, and I believe they're going to be a really important part of the North American supply chain for LFP batteries, and it looks like demand for their products should be strong in North America for years to come, based not only on the new US factories I already mentioned, but also due to the high tariffs associated with importing batteries and battery materials from China. The number of products that use LFP batteries here in North America is also growing. For example, in the rapidly growing battery energy storage sector, most of the products like Tesla Mega Packs and Powerwalls and similar competitors' products are now powered by LFP batteries, which was not the case just a few years ago. Beyond that, while lithium iron phosphate batteries do dominate the market in China, in the USA, nickel-based batteries have been the dominant technology used in electric vehicles, but there are several big EV manufacturers in North America that are either currently offering, they recently added LFP battery options to their market, and or they plan to offer LFP powered electric vehicles in North America in the near future. For example, in case you missed it, Rivian now offers an LFP battery option for the R1S, their SUV, and the R1T, their truck, you can get the dual motor standard versions of those vehicles with LFP batteries and they're rated to get 270 miles of EPA rated range. In addition, the Rivian EDV, which is their electric delivery van, gets 161 miles of EPA rated range and that's powered by LFP batteries. In addition, Ford offers the base Mustang Mach-E standard range vehicle and that once again has LFP batteries. Beyond that, GM is bringing back the Chevrolet Bolt, but this time it's going to have an LFP battery pack. In addition, based on what I can tell, it looks like the Chevy Silverado EV, their truck, will likely get an LFP battery option in the future. And Ford recently announced a more affordable midsize pickup truck coming in 2027 that is planned to be powered by LFP batteries. In addition, I do expect that since Tesla offers an LFP battery option for the Model 3 and for the Model Y globally, that they will in the future when they can find a domestic supply, whether that means building the batteries themselves or buying them from a company like, for example, LG or some other company that's building LFP batteries in the US market. Once they can get that supply set up, I believe they will offer an LFP battery option for the Model 3 and the Model Y at least in the United States in the future. So it looks like demand for North American LFP materials should continue to grow and stay very strong in the coming years. And First Phosphate Corp appears to be well positioned to benefit from this demand. If you wanna find out more about First Phosphate Corporation, I will put some links in the video description. And I wanna say thank you to First Phosphate Corporation for sponsoring this video. And in addition, I'd like to know your opinion on what I discussed in this video. Please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.